OpenSSL is an open source implementation of the SSL and TLS protocols. The core library, written in the C programming language, implements basic cryptographic functions and provides various utility functions. Wrappers allowing the use of the OpenSSL library in a variety of computer languages are available. Versions are available for most Unix-like operating systems, OpenVMS and Microsoft Windows. IBM provides a port for the system I. OpenSSL is based on SSL EAY by Eric Andrew Young and Tim Hudson, development of which unofficially ended on December 17, 1998, when Young and Hudson both started to work for RSA Security. Project History The OpenSSL project was founded in 1998 to invent a free set of encryption tools for the code used on the Internet. As of 2014 two-thirds of all web servers use it. The OpenSSL project management team consists of four Europeans. The entire development group consists of 11 members, out of which 10 are volunteers. There is only one full-time employee, Stephen Henson, the lead developer. The project has a budget of less than $1 million a year and relies in part on donations. Steve Marquis, a former military consultant in Maryland started the Foundation for Donations and Consultancy Contracts and garnered sponsorship from the United States Department of Homeland Security and the United States Department of Defense. Major version releases, algorithms, OpenSSL supports a number of different cryptographic algorithms, ciphers, AES, Blowfish, Camellia, Seed, Cast128, DES, IDEA, RC2, RC4, RC5, Triple DES, GOST 28147-89, Cryptographic Hash Functions, MD5, MD4, MD2, SHA1, SHA2, RIPMD160, MDC2, GOST of 34.11-94, Public Key Cryptography, RSA, DSA, DeFi Euro Hellman Key Exchange, Elliptic Curve, GOST of 34.10-2001, Perfect Forward Secrecy is supported using Elliptic Curve DeFi Euro Hellman since version 1.0. FIPS 140-2 Compliance, as of December 2012. OpenSSL is one of two open source programs to be involved with validation under the FIPS 140 2 Computer Security Standard by the National Institute of Standards and Technologies Cryptographic Module Validation Program. A certificate was first awarded in January 2006 but revoked in July 2006 when questions were raised about the validated module EU Euro Unregistered Trademark S interaction with outside software. The certification was reinstated in February 2007. Licensing OpenSSL is dual licensed under the OpenSSL license and the SSL EAY license. The OpenSSL license is Apache License 1.0 and SSL EAY license bears some similarity to a full clause BSD license. The common usage of the term dual license is that the user may pick which license they wish to use. However, OpenSSL documentation uses the term dual license to mean that both licenses apply. As the OpenSSL license is Apache License 1.0, but not Apache License 2.0, it requires the phrase this product includes software developed by the OpenSSL project for use in the OpenSSL toolkit to appear in advertising material and any redistributions. Due to this restriction, the OpenSSL license and the Apache license 1.0 are incompatible with the GPL. Some GPL developers have added an OpenSSL exception to their licenses specifically allowing OpenSSL to be used with their system. GNUWGET and CLIM both use such exceptions. Some packages explicitly modify the GPL license by adding an extra section at the beginning of the license documenting the exception. Other packages use the old GPL licensed new TLS and MPL licensed NSS, both of which perform the same task. Notable vulnerabilities, timing attacks on RSA keys. On March 14, 2003, a timing attack on RSA keys were discovered, which meant a vulnerability within OpenSSL versions 0.9.7a and 0.9.6. 
This vulnerability was assigned CAN 2003-0147 by the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures Project. RSA blinding was not turned on by default by OpenSSL, since it is not easily possible to when providing SSL or TLS using OpenSSL. Almost all SSL-enabled Apaches were affected, along with many other applications of OpenSSL. Timing differences on the number of extra reductions along and use of carrot subber and normal integer multiplication algorithms meant that it was possible for local and remote attackers to obtain the private key of the server. Denial of service ASN1 parsing, OpenSSL 0.9.6K had a bug where certain ASN1 sequences triggered a large amount of recursions on Windows machines, discovered on November 4, 2003. Windows could not handle large recursions correctly, so OpenSSL would crash as a result. Being able to send arbitrary large amounts of ASN1 sequences would cause OpenSSL to crash as a result. A client certificate to OSSL TLS enabled server could accept ASN1 sequences and crash. OCSP stapling vulnerability, when creating a handshake, the client could send an incorrectly formatted client hello message leading to OpenSSL parsing more than the end of the message. Titled CVE 2011-0014, this affected all OpenSSL versions 0.9.8H to 0.9.8Q and OpenSSL 1.0.0 to 1.0.0C. Since the parsing could lead to a read on an incorrect memory address, it was possible for the attacker to cause a DDoS. It was also possible that some applications exposed the contents of parsed OCSP extensions, leading to an attacker being able to read the contents of memory that came after the client hello. ASN1 Bio Vulnerability When using bio or file-based functions to read entrusted DER format data, OpenSSL is vulnerable. The CVE assigned this CVE 2012-2110, as this was discovered on April 19, 2012. While not directly affecting the SSL TLS code of OpenSSL, any application that was using ANS1 functions were also not affected. SSL, TLS and DTLS plaintext recovery attack, in handling CBC cipher suites in SSL, TLS, and DTLS, OpenSSL was found to be vulnerable to a timing attack which arises during the MAC processing. This was found by Nadam L. Forden and Kenny Patterson, who published their findings on February 5, 2013, given the name 2013 Cape Verdean Escudos to 169 Cape Verdean Escudos. All versions of OpenSSL were affected, and it was only partially mitigated by the use of the OpenSSL FIPS object module and the FIPS mode of operation is enabled. Predictable keys, in order to keep a warning from being issued by the Valgrind analysis tool, a maintainer of the Debian distribution applied a patch to the Debian implementation of the OpenSSL suite, which inadvertently broke its random number generator in the process. The broken version was included in the Debian release of September 17, 2006. Any key generated with the broken random number generator, as well as data encrypted with such a key, was compromised. The error was reported by Debian on May 13, 2008. On the Debian 4.0 distribution, these problems were fixed in version 0.9.8C4H3 and for the Debian 5.0 distribution, these problems were fixed in version 0.9.8G9. Heartbleed OpenSSL versions 1.0.1 through 1.0.1F had a severe memory handling bug in their implementation of the TLS Heartbeat extension that could be used to reveal up to 64 kilobytes of the application's memory with every heartbeat. By reading the memory of the web server, attackers could access sensitive data, including the server's private key. This could allow attackers to decode earlier eavesdropped communications if the encryption protocol used does not ensure perfect forward secrecy. Knowledge of the private key could also allow an attacker to mount a man in the middle attack against any future communications. The vulnerability might also reveal unencrypted parts of other users' sensitive requests and responses, including session cookies and passwords, which might allow attackers to hijack the identity of another user of the service. At its disclosure, 
some 17% or half a million of the Internet's secure web servers certified by trusted authorities were believed to have been vulnerable to the attack. However, Heartbleed can affect both the server and client. CCS Injection Vulnerability CCS Injection Vulnerability is a security bypass vulnerability that exists in OpenSSL. The vulnerability is due to a weakness in OpenSSL methods used for keying material. This vulnerability can be exploited through the use of a man-in-the-middle attack, where an attacker may be able to decrypt and modify traffic in transit. A remote unauthenticated attacker could exploit this vulnerability by using a specially crafted handshake to force the use of weak keying material. Successful exploitation could lead to a security bypass condition where an attacker could gain access to potentially sensitive information. The attack can only be performed between a vulnerable client and server. OpenSSL clients are vulnerable in all versions of OpenSSL. Servers are only known to be vulnerable in OpenSSL 1.0.1 and 1.0.2 Beta 1. Users of OpenSSL servers earlier than 1.0.1 are advised to upgrade as a precaution. Forks, Libs. In the wake of Heartbleed, members of the OpenBSD project forked OpenSSL starting with the 1.0.1G branch, to create a project named Libs. In the first week of pruning the OpenSSL's code base, more than 90,000 lines of C code had been removed from the fork. Boring SSL. In June 2014, Google announced its own fork of OpenSSL dubbed Boring SSL. Google plans to cooperate with OpenSSL and Librasl developers. See also Comparison of TLS implementations, Posse project, references External links